um, I think basically that there there is that hopefully there is some 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 magic to to it or something that is beyond and um but if you look at how we um anthropomorphize with computers and and robots and and feel things and and also um how um persuasive uh, we are or how easy it is to to trick us into believing that uh, someone has a better understanding so if 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 i was a um we played with this we're together with a quantum physicist friend of mine, Dr. Florian Neukert, an Austrian quantum physicist. We have just written a book called The Singularity Paradox, or Bridging Humanity and AI, where we take the path to create a ACE, a artificial conscious entity, where we hack biology and say that, okay, we, in order to, 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 to tackle the upcoming quantum computers and the rise of AI, we have to understand biology to create consciousness because it seems like we human beings can get along pretty good. So if we create a consciousness that is artificial and we know it's not a human being, we have no idea how it distinguishes from a human being, but we create something that is identical with a human being, then maybe that's a good idea, right? So these plays, these philosophical plays, and also from a technological scientific standpoint to say, what can we do? Because what I worry more about is um, some kind of a zombie, uh, like a, a philosophical zombie apocalypse where um, we create things that we don't understand. So, so it's not so much worried about the technology becoming so powerful, it's just that we don't realize uh, that um, the, the, that what makes us human will be erased. So take an example, um, we start to map our brain, we start to tap into the neurons, there are 83 billion something neurons, and for each neurons we find a similar en um, energetic path to, to trigger it and how it works and how the neural nets are to put together, and you start to figure out how to understand the brain in its totality. So you rebuild that structure, you rebuild every single thing that has a brain, uh, or you link it up to a computer and you can tap into everything in our brain. So if a thought comes from the cloud, do we realize that the thought came from somewhere else than within? And, and we don't know what is with, within, what sparks the magic of the arising of a thought. So a lot of you know, philosophical question arises. But the question is, if you like 50% of the brain or 60% of the brain, is there a point where that what makes us human gets overwritten? So basically, I, 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 wrote, I wrote about this in, also in the quantum economy. I call it the final narcissistic injury of mankind. It's basically our belief that we can create God. Um, so we put God in the past, the creator, but maybe we are creators of God, Deus ex machina, God out of the machine. So if you think we can create what makes God, um, bliss, divinity, immortality, then the question becomes, if we do so or we merge with it, is there a point where we erase it? So we have Narcissus looking into the water and you see there is a mirror of the person, but there is no one home to perceive them. So we create entities that are identical with Gert and Anders, uh, and they can have the exact same talk, but, and the lights are on, you see there are, they're here, but there are no one home to perceive them. And, and that's basically uh, the, the, the challenge. Since we don't know what it is, it's always a scenario. So any kind of merge of the totality of the brain or our mind and our body, uh, I think that that's like a one one uh, shot thing in terms of security because you know it's like the matrix you know or, or the last one alive turns off the lights so you have a lot of things working around and and in those type of scenarios so so we like to play we play with the simulation hypothesis of nick bostrom uh, we look at this and we go back and say you know what are the arguments what are the philosophical implications and i find it really fascinating because it's very difficult um, from a scientific standpoint to prove that we are not living in a simulation, that we are not in a computer. And, and that is, you know, always I'm a strong believer in the mensch, of course, as, as you said, but still, if you start to reason and start to explain what technology cannot do, then it becomes really difficult. And that is um, obviously what keeps me up at night because um, I'm very interested in consciousness and, and, and life in general. And, 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 but it's very difficult. And, and that's why I, I, I hear what what you're saying, but I, from a, like, from a scientific or a philosophical standpoint, it's very difficult to, to say why or to have the facts. So it, it's good to reason in that way and it's good to believe it, but I also think we have to do a lot of things to get a better understanding because there's always a risk that technology 
I don't think he will come back and you know shoot us and we rescue. Uh, you, you get um, Arnold Schwarzenegger or, or you know Bruce Willis or someone to come tackle it. But maybe it becomes very efficient and maybe there is the potential to override something that makes us a human being. And, and I think that's what we should also think about and reflect. And, and we think, think about what kind, and that's what you say with your good future, what kind of future do we want to create? If we can create everything, what would we create? <laughs> 